Hello everyone, good afternoon. I am Rajat Agarwal from Dreamview. Today I'm going to talk about making single sensor omnidirectional stereo cameras a reality. And as we all know in the last two decades, we have seen the growth of many different omnidirectional data capturing technologies including ketadioptic cameras, multiple sensor camera approaches. And in this talk, we'll see DreamView's innovative ketadioptic solution, which has not only revolutionized the way we capture the omnidirectional stereo data, but also enabling the visual intelligence for the futuristic robots, smart cities, and also the healthcare. And in the later half of the talk, we'll also talk about omnidirectional stereo data and how this data can be transformed and adapted for state-of-the-art computer vision and deep learning methods. Our team of experts at DreamView took a step forward and made the omnidirectional stereo cameras just using a single imaging sensor and mirror binocular optics a reality by their five years of long research. We do understand the challenges posed by ketadioptic systems, which make them difficult to scale for the real applications, such as having low resolution, complex calibration, low lighting, and having high dynamic range. And in this talk, I'll present DreamView solution to these problems at an industrial scale, which enables the growth of such cameras in the future. And uh, omnidirectional stereo data is also uncommon for uh, traditional computer vision methods, which also makes it challenging to scale and get commercialized. So in the next 10 years, we all expect that these emerging markets to really make use of omni stereo technology. While yesterday, we as a community, we are working towards omnidirectional methods. Um, there are different segments like smart machines, which needs to have the complete situational awareness, medical endoscopes for 360 degree invasive imaging. And now we have been seeing mobile phones having stereo cameras and also the smart infrastructure for factory settings, for warehouse, for creating digital twins of a workplace and enabling the remote teleoperations, et cetera. And what we believe is the only stereo data can really impact more than $100 billion market in the next 10 years. And because of this large scale of these applications, we need to dig a little deep and understand why single sensor only stereo approach is the key, right? So the problem with the moving or multiple cameras is that it makes the calibration and camera positioning difficult and thus the imaging system becomes very, very bulky and very delicate to use. And when you have these multiple camera approaches, it also gives rise to other visible artifacts like motion parallax, we have visible seams in the videos, we have synchronization errors between these multiple cameras. And also in the, in the final views, you'll see that we typically have misalignments when we move from one camera to the other camera. So these kind of approaches also limit, you know, sometimes they use to static scenes because having high dynamic scenes, you need to have uh, a real time processing of this video. But these kind of approaches require extensive post processing to get the stereo views. And not only that, we typically have seen with these kind of cameras, we have large occlusions, um, which makes it a little difficult because when in the final views you have the distorted images, which makes it difficult for the further processing by the computer vision methods. And in the industry, we have seen many devices emerging specifically, you know, for multiple different applications. Like we have seen uh, capturing street view using ladybug cameras, uh, Samsung Run 360 and Kanda for virtual reality video captures. Uh, we are now seeing Rico for doing indoor mapping. And recently, uh, DreamView has released uh, its first and only, world's only 
360 stereo camera in 2019, which is the high resolution single sensor based only stereo camera, which not only can be applied to virtual reality applications, but also can be applied to robotics navigation, localization mapping, and other indoor use cases. And this year, 2020, DreamView has released its the most compact Omni Stereo camera called as PAL Mini, which is suitable for navigation for indoor robots or uh, use cases like in-cabin driver monitoring. So yes, there is a lot of, uh, lot of cameras coming in now. There were a lot of cameras earlier, but really the applications uh, and the practicality of these things are very, very important. And in other part of the talk, I'm gonna talk about how we can actually capture these kind of data so that we can do further processing and really make use of uh, this data in our applications. So when we talk about Omni Stereo data, you know, we have seen that three typical challenges that we are not aware of, right? The first one is how to capture an Omni Stereo data. And Yes, there are different devices, but is there a device which I can use right now to capture it and then do further processing? Maybe not. And, and then the second question is that, okay, if I got a 360 Omni stereo camera, how do I calibrate? It's, it's not same as my perspective camera, which I can apply normal checkerboard kind of calibration. So what is the calibration method that we use for these Omni stereo devices? And then the third question which comes is, how do you process this kind of information? Because this is not same as our regular images, regular narrow field of view images. Uh, this kind of data typically have a spherical view, which is not, and most of our deep learning and AI uh, engines right now are not being trained on this kind of data. So the question is, how do I actually use this for my application, right? And we will show that what's our, what's DreamView's approach in solving these three things using the Omni Stereo data for the real uh, applications. So, yes, we have seen uh, multiple omnidirectional stereo devices, and I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of them. I've seen as one of the best solutions. Um, and then the question is why do we need single sensor based? Why can't we just live with having? multi-sensor based omni direction stereo. So how we solve this capturing problem is by thinking about what's the nature of light rays which we have to capture in order to mimic two stereo pair in 360. And for those of you who are really looking to use omni stereo data for the research, I would really encourage to learn about this part so that uh, when you use it for your applications, you know what kind of artifacts you can assume, what kind of improvements you can assume for your algorithms. So there have been approaches like in the paper from Google, devices called Google Jump. Uh, the idea was to generate very high resolution images and completely applicable to capturing virtual reality videos uh, and the idea was to arrange multiple cameras in radial direction and use high-end stitching algorithm to compute high resolution videos. Uh, and these, this kind of display, and then it is, it is optimized to capture real scenes and events for today's VR headsets and, uh, and also then optimized for the video serving platforms. While this is good, this cannot be applied to applications where you really need real-time camera feed for the processing and you really want to take uh, real-time actions, right? So how we wanted to solve this problem was to enable the simplicity of data acquisition, right? And all the cameras in this kind of approach needs to be synchronized using an electronic system to ensure that the images are captured at the same time. Whereas, by using a single camera based solution, it eliminates the need for synchronization and reduces the size of the device, making it easy to be used and handled. And data is acquired in the form of regular image or video and may be stored in standard format. So 
uh, you don't have to do any further processing on high-end GPUs uh, and you can directly use it for your uh, computer vision network. Now talking about what we do at Review, we presented a practical solution in 2016 in CVPR for generating 360 degree stereo panoramic videos using just a single sensor. And by that, we wanted to solve this problem of synchronization. Uh, we wanted to minimize the calibration problem and so that the camera really have the ability to convert any kind of camera into panoramic stereo capture device. And that's what we enabled with our optics, uh, which is much scalable and it can capture all light rays required for stereo panorama in a single frame um, and, and makes it very easy to design and also practical to manufacture. And, and, and I, I want to start with some concept of you know, how we captured omnidirectional stereo um, and then how we approximated uh, into capturing that optics design. So to understand the concept of omnidirectional stereo, uh, really what we are doing is we are mimicking our eyes, traversing a sphere as we look around. And for each eye location, as we see a different set of light rays and, and the head rotates, we capture theta phi angle. And for each set of light rays, we have different set of positions. And to really capture this kind of views, what you really need is to have for every pair of points on a sphere, you need to capture a light ray. And what we do, uh, what we call it as a standard of a 4D light field function. And yes, there are light field cameras which exist, but are very limited in number. Um, and it's really difficult to capture this kind of light field function in a compact shape. We, we, we all know that. And to reduce the complexity, what we do is we move to 3D light fields where we say, okay, for each viewpoint, if we are able to capture the set of tangential rays in the clockwise direction, and the set of tangential rays in the anti-clockwise direction by the other set of cameras, and if we combine these kind of cameras, can we really get the only stereo views? And at dream view, what we do is that we are able to capture the set of tangential rays by not exactly putting the camera sensor there, but replacing that camera sensor by an optics placed at the tangent of the viewing circle. And once we do that, we are able to do two such arrangements for one for your left eye and the another one for your right eye. And then these two can be combined into a single design. Um, and then once you combine these two kind of mirrors, you get a single rigid body based on which you can capture the light rays on a tangent direction for both the eyes and that's how you capture the 360 stereo views on a single sensor. And obviously there are uh, multiple other solutions that could have been uh, in there. You can use uh, flat mirrors there, you can use parabolic mirrors, you can use elliptical mirrors. But we did a study and we found out that the most effective in terms of providing the uniform resolution is the parabolic device. Um, and in order to increase the field of view from top to bottom uh, and in the horizontal direction, uh, it's better to use curved mirrors because flat mirrors will always have a limited field of view. And in this kind of design, we really then uh, solve the problem of technical design challenges and try to see how can we make it really no, with no occlusion and no interreflections and in such a way that it does not have any kind of missing regions or also any kind of du duplications. When you get a really good shape uh, of the optics which looks like this uh, and with this we now get ultra fast omnidirectional stereo capture, we get about uh, 6,000 by uh, 1,600 stereo videos at 12 hertz from this camera. We can capture 4K videos at 40 hertz 
and this is just using a single camera. So this kind of camera can actually produce uh, lots of data with a single video stream and you don't need to synchronize multiple cameras. It's, the setup is not bulky, it's half a pound. Um, and, and actually the CPU consumption, which it does, because it's capturing only a single image, uh, it's about 0.005% of, of a one gigahertz processor. So this is how the camera looks like, the optics looks like. Uh, this is the actually our 10th iteration of our optics design. This is called as PAL. And really one, one of the major problems that we solved is that it does not have any kind of uh, missing regions in between when typical stereo depth technology you always have a blind spot of about half a meter to one meter whereas in this kind of design because of the parallax and because of the mirrors are almost adjacent to each other you don't get uh, any kind of blind spot the result of which we get you know, a very high resolution, and there are definitely known issues, and we have seen that in cathedral optic methods, there are known issues uh, having low resolution, uh, you know, artifacts because of the manufacturing of the optics, etc. But at DreamView, we really solve this problem by manufacturing the optics with the right method and right manufacturing technology, and we have been able to get. Uh, a resolution of about 6,000 by 1,600 pixels as the highest resolution by just using a nine megapixel sensor. Uh, and then we also really use the left eye and the right eye pair to super resolve uh, the resolution together and remove any kind of calibration artifacts that we have and that too at a very, very high speed. And if you see the images that I'm showing right now, you'll see the top views are the two studio pairs captured directly from the camera. Um, and also the bottom view is the, is the depth map captured uh, up till 10 meters from the camera. So the stereo baseline that we have in PAL is about seven centimeters. Uh, and then we in, in, in PAL mini, we have a stereo baseline of about two centimeters. So some of the uh, image characterization that we could uh, do with our camera, we have very high spatial and temporal resolution. Uh, we use, as I said, we use left and right pair to super resolve images, and we really get more than 95% throughput uh, the way we calibrate the camera so that from the single image there is actually only about 5% loss of pixels. Um, and with this kind of design, you can actually increase uh, the sensor resolution, and as soon as you increase the sensor resolution, your final uh, image resolution will also increase in the same way. Um, we use uh, left and right eye pair to do the HDR. We use uh, multiple different kind of coatings and depth information we use to create high dynamic range in our camera. Because typically the omnidirectional images, they typically suffer uh, from having uh, these kind of things. Then uh, we have effective aperture and less lighting. Typically, cataractic cameras fail uh, in having less aperture uh, and less lighting. But what we do uh, at DreamView, this is the kind of results that we have with the low lighting solution. And here is the demo that I'm showing. Although it's a low very lighting performance, it's able to, you will see that with the camera images, we're able to detect the obstacles which are very, very far off and actually does not create uh, any any hindrance in the in this. So the top view is the actual captured image at about 60 lux, uh, and then the bottom views are the refined exposure from those camera images. Uh, and also you can apply this kind of data for RGBD and for SLAM and point cloud generation. So this is the uh, demo of uh, our ROS back that we create from the camera in live, so once you put it in the machine vision applications for uh, robotic navigation, you put this camera, and then from there you can see um, you have this um, point cloud, using, using the point cloud you can create the SLAM and the navigation track. Uh, 
quickly coming to the uh, calibration aspect of it, uh, we do very robust optomechanical calibration because typically, even if there's a slight movement in the optics, it might create some issues in the final images. Uh, but we have been testing these cameras the last two years now, and we have no, no problem. Uh, in terms of, even if there is some kind of issue, we have the recalibration uh, between the camera images, which can be done from the factory calibration, because we have the single rigid body mirror, and you just have to find the accurate transformation between the two images to figure out the if there is any change in terms of the uh, resolution or in terms of the calibration. Talking about that, uh, we, with this kind of device opened up and I uh, specifically encourage everyone to take a look at uh, how it captures data and also use this kind of data for their future research and a couple of things that we have also been working on and it, <clears throat> this kind of camera actually opens up is uh, tracks on doing video stabilization and tracking um, and also having directional VR viewing. Because um, now we have the 360 3D data, so we, we can enable the viewers who have the virtual reality headset uh, to figure out if, um, you know, where the head should be guided so that they can have a nice view. We have the cameras available publicly now. You can uh, buy some of these cameras and try out and capture data. You don't have to do uh, very difficult uh, capturing and processing. We also have the embedded processing available inside the camera. So if you want to put your uh, open source algorithms or SLAM uh, or any object detection or recognition algorithms, you can directly put it into the camera and you can, in the feed, in the direct feed, you can see the output. And at last, yes, we are hiring uh, for our San Jose, Philadelphia, and Hyderabad office. And uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure meeting you all. Um, and I'll be available for the live Q&A uh, after this talk. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me any questions then. Thank you. Bye.